Hello, voila here. And what I have in front of me is a spectralis. But more importantly, what else I have in front of me is a large contraption that will ensure that the spectralis is given the wool in the proper order. Not only will it do so, it will only give one wool at a time, and it will never disorder itself. By that I mean it will never accidentally go too far or use a wool that perhaps wasn't in one of the in one of the droppers. So it's pretty complex. But I've laid out ways to build it in parts that will make it a lot easier to build. So, for starters, you'll notice I have the Manaseer monocle on. And so you can see that the Spectralis actually has a really small area. It actually only works one block out in all eight directions including vertical. Um, so, in order for it to pick up the wool, it's got to be in this 3x3 three three area, and it could only be one block above it or one block below it. Um, obviously, there's grass below this, so it doesn't need to be floating. But, I like the floating ones more. <laughs> uh, it also doesn't need a Gaia Mana Spreader to work, but I'm in creative mode, so I'm using a Gaia Mana Spreader. You could probably use an Elven Spreader. I don't think you'd even need a Potency Lens, to be honest. Um, but what I have here is Elf Glass. You could use whatever block you want. I, I chose Elf Glass because it's easy to see through and looks nice. A spreader, of course, a distributor to two pools and one spreader. This is your output spreader. Next, you add these little things around in kind of like a spiral shape and a spreader pointing straight up off of this pool. Then you start putting in your droppers droppers face directly into the center on the bottom layer. Next to them, in the empty spot, not the spot where you put the block before, you'll put hopper hawks. These, as you can see by this grass block here, don't actually have to be floating. They could be on grass blocks. However, the next layer these hopper hawks have to go in between these. You could put them in the corners, I guess, but I think they look nicer here, and they might not work properly in the corners. I haven't tested it. Um, if you put them in the corners, you'll be able to put a block below them. But otherwise, you'll need them to be floating. And very important are these glass covers here, and I'll explain why in the next step. Um, these droppers are in a very particular setup, and this is because droppers next to each other, for instance, if this dropper was where this hopper hawk is, will pass a signal to each other if they get a redstone signal. So, because you need to only use one wool at a time, and they need to be very particular, it's important to spread them out like this. This is the most compact form I could figure out so that they wouldn't intermingle signals. On the next layer, you have 
these other droppers pointing straight down and hopper hawks in their corners. These glass covers from the previous step are important because items from these droppers may sometimes land on top of these droppers on the same block with the hopper hawk. So you have to put a glass cover here to prevent that. Um, you don't have to worry about it with these ones because if the item lands here, it's probably going to have passed into the spectralist pickup range. And don't forget to put a block here. As you can see here, I put a mana pool here. This block, you could use any of the special mana pool augments like the Alchemy Catalyst, um, or a void, a void mana would be a good idea too, depending on how you have this set up. Um, and this mana pool is going to be connected to all of the hopper hawks so that their pickup range is increased. Um, This spreader will aim up at another spreader that will aim at this mana pool. I will cover that later. Next, you'll want to put red alloy wire on each of the droppers. And item frames on each of the droppers. One of each color of wool. It doesn't actually matter where you put each color of wool on the droppers. As you can see here, they're in a different position. This one's yellow on this one, this one's yellow on this one. And then on top of the red alloy wire, you're going to put framed insulated wire of the matching color for the wool that you chose for that dropper. Don't mix wool colors. And that is all of the active part of this device. The rest of it is all redstone logic. And I have devised this layout of redstone logic in particular so that the whole contraption can fit in one chunk, thus allowing it to be spot-loaded rather than chunk-loaded. Your pools might need to be put like in these few spots because obviously this is outside the 16 by 16 range if I go up here. This is what the redstone flooring looks like, and these covers are important, um, and it's pretty complex, so I'm actually going to isolate this first part, which is one of the more important parts, and I'm going to rebuild this in that isolated section. So, over here we have the isolated section. Down this line are going to be 16 remote comparators pointing into these blocks. For simplicity's sake, I've limited this to only a few. And I'm going to extend this just a little bit. And then one block above this block are going to be these, this row of blocks. You put a torch, a redstone torch, for each remote comparator. Then red alloy wire along the whole line. 
Remember, there's going to be 16 of these in the actual version. Then you'll need your red, red alloy wire to go across. There's a framed version, so you don't need this cover right here. But if you don't want to make framed red alloy wire, you could just use the cover. I'm going to use the frame just for ease. Then on this block, pointing this way, you're going to put your timer. This is a project red timer. So the input is here and the output is all three of the other sides. Don't worry about the timing for this yet. That's one of the last things you should set. Then, on this block, pointing straight down, you're going to want your Project Red repeater. This isn't the normal repeater, and you can't use a normal repeater for this, because what we're actually doing is we're using it to lengthen the, t the pulse from the timer. So we're going to set that to four ticks, which is right-clicking it twice once you've put it down. Then, we put a red alloy wire here, and a red alloy wire here, and a redstone torch on that block. This has to be a solid block, it can't be a cover like these. This has to be a cover, because there's actually a bug with this repeater where it outputs a signal to the block behind it, and that was triggering this red alloy wire, even when it wasn't receiving a signal. Just, it will always output a signal to the block behind it. I'm not sure why. Um, it might be something to do with how repeaters used to be made before um, repeaters were implemented in vanilla, but I don't know. All I know is it has to be on a cover, as does this red alloy wire. This has to be a cover. Um, so off of this torch, for comparison, we've done all of this. Off of this torch, wire, 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 I believe. No, that is not right. Wire, wire, I think. Wait, let me double check. Sorry. Yeah. Something's not right. Oh, I'm missing a cover. That's what's not right. There we go. And then a vanilla repeater this way. On this side of the repeater, where the repeater is outputting, you're going to have a repeater going that way. For some reason, this red alloy wire isn't connecting to this torch, and it should be. Oh well, you could do that. Just put a piece of red alloy wire there if it doesn't connect to that for some reason. And you'll notice this repeater now has a lock on it. Now what that does is it prevents the signal from going through it. But what it also does is if I were to say put a lever here, turn off this repeater, you'll notice that the signal now goes into the repeater. But if I turn this lever back off, thus turning the torch on, thus locking the repeater, it will keep its signal. This is how we store what uh, wool block we're supposed to be using next on the spectralist. And it's very important. 
that we use vanilla repeaters for this because the project red ones don't have this functionality as far as I'm aware. So this repeater you want to set no extra ticks. This one though you right click it once so it's in the second position right there. That is important because if it's too short, we're going to end up sending way too many wools, and the spectral list is going to eat them out of order. Red ally wire coming off of that. This lever shouldn't be there. But now that this is lit, we have the base for the rest of our setup. So, off of these, this line, we're just going to keep going, and this whole line needs covers all the way down, all the way down. And every other block, you're going to put a vanilla repeater like this, and another repeater pointing that way with one tick, or two ticks, rather. Use Wyla, two ticks. Then, right here, you're going to place your red ally wire between them. Don't do this out of order, otherwise you're going to end up with more than one of these repeaters on. We don't want that. Only set up your first one to be on, and then let the rest be off. Then, a cover here. It has to be in the same block as this red ally wire because the next item we put down is this pulse former. Make sure the in is on this side, otherwise you're going to have a bad day. It's going to be hard to see which of these is facing the wrong way, and you're going to be wondering why your machine is getting your wool wasted. Lastly, red alloy wire there. And from here on out, you're basically duplicating this circuit over and over all the way around the whole device. So put a wire there, a pulse former there, a cover, th oops, cover there, and a red alloy wire there. Just these six blocks over and over, all the way around, until you get to the very end. Where the last one goes back into the first. Then what you're going to want to do is set up your remote comparators to each of your wool colors. Make sure that you're clicking on the dropper and not the hopper hawks or the red alloy wire. Some of them are tricky to reach. If you don't do this now, there's going to be all kinds of wiring in the way, and it's going to be even harder. Trust me, I did that. <laughs> Additionally, if you're keeping track of which remote comparator goes to which wool, you can use this to figure out this kind of layout of item frames to figure out which wool you're missing. You'll notice that since in this actual setup, we're out of black wool. We're only out of black wool. Yet the device is not working. That's because when you're out of something, this torch will turn on, which will turn off the timer. The last thing you need to do set up your wool colors or your wire colors in the exact right order. The order is white, orange, magenta, white blue, yellow, lime, pink, gray, light gray, cyan, purple, blue, 
brown, green, red, black, and then back to white. The corners are set up as such. For example, this first one, you have it output to one block and then back into another repeater. And then in that output, you set up the pulse former. It doesn't matter if it's on this side or this side. Just make sure that your pulse former is facing out. And make sure it doesn't connect to this outer line. You can then put your red alloy wire and your framed insulated cable. It's important to put the red alloy wire because the framed insulated wire won't actually connect to the pulse former. You have to have an, an uncovered ordinary red alloy wire at the end of the line. That is also why we did so over here. These would not connect to the droppers without the red alloy wire there. And no signal would be received. Finally, all you have left to do once you set your insulated framed wire is make bundled cable going to all of your droppers from all of your pulse formers. Once you have that, you just need to make sure that your hopper hawk is linked to this banana pool, your spectralis is linked to the proper spreader, and you have a way to get wool to the setup. You don't have to be super accurate. As you'll see, I'm going to activate it from here. You'll notice with a wand of the forest, our spectralis is receiving every color of wool in order consistently until we run out. What have we run out of? Apparently two, orange and white. So let's go shear some sheep. Orange, white. There you go, an automatic spectralist sorter. I hope this works for you, and thanks for watching. Lime wool, huh?